Justin was diagnosed at three and a half months of age. He was having some delays with his development and also some differences in his movement. His imaging showed that there was a problem with the way his myelin or the coating of his nerves in his brain had developed and he was given the diagnosis of a disease called palatius Wurzbacher, which is a hypomyelinating disease. Around 13 years of age, the neurologist at Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario realized that he had surpassed what we thought he would do. Over time, it became apparent that he didn't fit the clinical disease at all. When we were teenagers, they realized that he was misdiagnosed at birth. A lot of his nerves weren't conducting information properly. But despite that, he was still able to learn to walk, learn to express himself differently. Justin actually continued on. He just was not letting go. Despite the dark diagnosis, we knew that he's okay. He's actually working through this. We were just learning how to do exomes. We were just learning what, how to manage all this data. We waited a long time for the results, and they found something on a gene, but weren't sure. They needed some more research. It came to a point where we had to seek other options for genetic testing because it wasn't clear as to what he actually had. His clinical presentation being so unique, for many years people really putting all their efforts to try and figure out what he has and not being able to come up with an answer. They identified the USP7 as being one of the genes that was responsible to his disorder. We put that gene into the Matchmaker Exchange, went back to the data, and we really took a close look. We identified another new change in another gene involved, and again, we put it into the matchmaker exchange, and we're able to match with families in the Netherlands and also with Australia. All those kids, all those individuals who we matched with, all had uh, the same degree of hypomyelination as Justin. While the rare disease community embraces a culture of sharing, what we have been lacking is the infrastructure by which to do so. And the Matchmaker Exchange and groups like the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health is providing that infrastructure to exponentially increase the rate of our discoveries. We got one diagnosis when he was three and a half months old, and then for 13 years we live with that, and then we get told that's wrong, and then we wait six years to get a new one. The family's gone through a lot over the years, and I think they just needed an answer and some closure. It's made all the difference. And for other families, it gives them a starting point. Having the match, coming up with the diagnoses, the family was able to look forward and really focus on Justin, making his life as happy and healthy as, as they can. The fact that I could even put a face to that person across the country who figured out why Justin is so special is amazing. I think it's important for all geneticists to know how part of their work is. All of the families that have been involved in our national projects have elected to share their data through the Matchmaker Exchange because they're all seeking the same thing, which is diagnostic clarity. Matchmaker Exchange made those connections with the other groups and we had answers within hours. If that didn't exist, then we would think we're the only family in the world. It's extremely important that physicians and researchers share information both from the clinical side of things as well as from the genetic side of things. To find other children to see what makes them unique. They don't want a similar family to undergo the same experience. There's other people out there. Having that support is so important. It makes a tremendous difference for families. The larger the database, the more data that we get, the more that we can share, the better we're going to be off. The majority of patients with suspected rare disease after genome-wide sequencing are without a diagnosis. For a subset of these patients, finding an additional patient anywhere in the world with an overlapping clinical presentation and a variant in the same gene can facilitate their diagnosis. But the problem that we face is that these data sets are siloed. Collaboration and sharing of genetic information is now allowing families to come out of those silos and connect with other families and connect with other clinicians and really giving them a different quality of life. I can't uh, uh, express how important this is. For us, the fact that he has a diagnosis means there's potential answers out there, but besides that, he is who he is and without a diagnosis, nothing. Nothing changes, like, he's still Justin. Justin is incredible, he's beautiful, he's perfect. He's perfect the way he is.